Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Almost time to say goodbye to all of you because uh, this is the so called last truly the sorry the last lecture of this course. Uh, this course is supposed to be 40 lectures, 39 lectures are for the real course and the 40th lecture is supposedly a summarization of what is done, but I know that if I summarize things it will bore you. So, in the last lecture, I will give you what is called an entertainment lecture, which would be of completely different flavor, but doing optimization at a bit level, which is higher than what we have been doing. But we, let us mention you that at this moment, what we are doing is really not a undergrad level thing. It is a grad level thing largely for more for those students who are involved in some research uh, using optimization techniques, especially convex optimization techniques. So, we are going to start by talking about minimization of DC functions and minimization of this form, right. So, first we had considered the case C is equal to R n, then if f is a local or global mean of this problem which we called P2, then we know that, no, sorry, if x bar is a local, del g of x bar however, this condition is really necessary, it is not sufficient. this condition is really necessary and not sufficient, but for convex optimization problems we have necessary and sufficient condition for global minimization. So, it is quite natural to ask that this even though these problems are non-convex because if you have a twice continuously differentiable function uh, you can write it as a DC function. So, even if this function is non-convex can I uh, tell something more about it that is it possible to give at least mathematically, theoretically a uh, if and only if condition for existence of a global minima. So, a necessary and sufficient condition for existence of a global minima, but not sufficient. For x bar to be the global minima. to be the global minimum of P2. So, what you really need to do is uh, the qu ask a question is, is, is it possible to give such a condition a necessary and sufficient condition for x bar to be a global minimum. In that we and the answer surprisingly is yes and our tool is the epsilon sub differential. And I would again like to recall you that if f is a convex function from R n to R and the epsilon sub differential at x given an epsilon greater than 0 is the set of all vectors xi in R n which satisfies the following inequality. Xi in a product y minus x bar minus epsilon for all y in R n it will be important to note that del E f x bar is always non empty for any epsilon greater than 0. So, it has some drawbacks like uh, okay, even if the function is 
differentiable, we cannot say much about the derivative here, much about that that will be only a singleton set, no it is not necessarily. So, however, it helps us in studying this kind of problems. Now, if c is equal to r n, then x bar element of R n is a global minimum of P 2 So, now we are doing only for the unconstrained case, we have not done anything for the constrained case. So, you will see most of our problem is for the unconstrained case. So, you might be quite surprised that we have not given any condition for the constrained case. Here giving condition for the constant case is uh, supposedly slightly difficult and uh, but it is not so difficult as we think so. We will try to see what we can do. Uh, let us have a look at things. First let us do it for this R n case and then try to apply it. So, then if x bar is, is a global minimum if and only if. this. Now, this problem has a crux, this has to be true for all epsilon greater than 0, right. For all epsilon greater than 0, if this is true, then this x bar is a global minimum of the DC problem, unconstrained DC problem. So, let us try to prove this fact. So, the question is how to prove it. So, let us start with the fact that let x bar be a global minimizer of P 2. Okay, then uh, f x minus g x is greater than equal to f x bar minus g x bar for all x in R n, which implies that f x minus f x bar is greater than equal to g x minus g x bar for all x in R n. For any epsilon greater than 0 and any xi element of we have f x minus f x bar bigger than g x minus g x bar and then applying the optimality condition. This is exactly same as writing. Now, I will just apply the definition of the epsilon sub differential which is this, which will give me the following. This would imply that xi is element of del E f x bar. So, it will imply that del E g x bar is subset of del E f x bar for all epsilon del oh, epsilon sub differential of g at x bar is contained in the epsilon sub differential of f at x bar for all epsilon greater than 0. Now, the question is given that x bar is element of R n such that del epsilon of g of x bar subset of del epsilon of f of x bar for all epsilon greater than 0. The question is, is, is x bar a global minimum? So, 
here the math becomes slightly interesting and let us see how do we do it. So, let us assume that x bar is not a global minimizer. So, there, there exist x at element of R n such that f of x at minus g of x at is strictly less than f of x bar minus g of x bar. So, now we will have this. Now, what we have done is that we have assumed that x bar is not a global minima. So, we will get this. Now, how do I prove it? This is again a proof by contradiction which means that if x bar is not a global minimizer of the problem P2, then I have to show some contradiction arising. So, let me write uh, this as f x bar minus f x star minus g x bar plus g x star strictly bigger than 0 and define So, what we will show? We will define this po positive number delta and we will show that delta is strictly less than delta which is uh, impossible. Okay, I set delta to be this. So, naturally delta is greater than 0. Now, consider xi hat element of del g x hat note it is not the epsilon sub differential just the sub differential. So, this would imply that g x bar minus g x hat is greater than equal to xi hat into x bar minus x hat. So, that implies that g x bar minus g x hat minus of this part this is clear. Now, since delta is greater than 0, it would imply that if I add delta to this quantity, it will become strictly greater than 0 because to a non-negative quantity, I have added a strictly positive quantity. So, that would be strictly greater than 0. Now, this is again a positive quantity and we will define an epsilon. So, for that epsilon the given hypothesis will hold. So, I will define epsilon equal to xi hat x bar minus x tilde x hat plus delta. So, naturally epsilon this would again imply that epsilon is greater than 0. This is very simple and straightforward and clear. Now, for any x in R n note that xi hat x minus x bar minus epsilon can be written as xi hat x minus x hat plus x hat minus x bar minus epsilon, which when I write down the definition of epsilon would lead to the fact that xi hat x minus x hat minus delta plus g x hat. So, here xi hat x hat minus x bar will cancel with 
uh, when I put minus, it will cancel with psi hat x bar minus x hat. So, what you will get is this one. Now, as xi hat is element of del g x hat, it implies very simply that xi hat is also element of del delta g x hat. Okay. Now, once you know this, sorry, you will immediately write g of x is bigger than g of x hat plus epsilon hat x minus x hat minus delta. So, this would immediately show from this above expression, from this expression here, from this expression that xi hat x minus x bar minus epsilon is less than g x minus g x bar. This is true for any x because x was arbitrary for x element of R n, any x element of R n, which implies that xi hat is element of del epsilon g x bar. This also implies by our hypothesis that xi hat is element of del epsilon f of x bar. So, so in particular, for x equal to x hat, it implies that f of x hat minus f of x bar is bigger than xi hat times x hat minus x bar minus epsilon. Now, if you go back to the definition of delta, then from there you can write 2 delta is equal to f of x bar minus f of x hat minus g of x bar minus g of x hat. Now, this from here, you know this is nothing but epsilon minus xi hat into x hat minus x bar, just what you have got before you are writing them down is minus of g x bar minus of g x hat in brackets. So, minus g x bar plus g x hat. Now, once you know that if so epsilon minus g x bar, the way epsilon is defined, if you go back to the definition of epsilon, then what do you get? Epsilon minus this is delta minus this. So, is delta plus epsilon hat into not now it will be slightly we will just show for help just putting the correct sign putting an better sign x hat minus x bar rather than x bar minus x hat. Okay. Hence from this here 2 delta is less than equal to delta epsilon minus this is delta plus epsilon hat x hat minus x bar minus epsilon hat x hat minus x bar is equal to delta which is strictly less than 2 delta proving that 2 delta is strictly less than 2 delta which is a contradiction. This shows that x bar is indeed a global minimum of f minus g over c is equal to r n. It is important to realize at the very instant that in this last lecture, 
uh, you may now ask me the question why I am always about putting C is equal to R n for this case why I am not putting C to be just a closed convex set subset of R n a proper subset of R n. The answer is that yes it can be done, it can be done and the problem is that even if it can be done one has to realize that the, we would get into certain technicality especially with the sum of uh, you take the sum of two functions basically now if I want to do for the case when C is a closed convex set I need to answer you this question what is this how to compute this. So, this would be getting into too much of technicality keeping in view the level of this course such a technicality is really not required at this stage. But I can show you something quite interesting that you can use this idea what we have just proved to devise a very simple looking necessary and sufficient optimality condition for maximization of a convex function over a convex set. In order to do so we will introduce this idea of the epsilon normal set to C at x bar. It is a set of all V in R n such that V times x minus x bar is less than epsilon for all x in C. So, if epsilon is equal to 0 then this is nothing but a standard normal cone that we know in C x. But if epsilon is greater than 0 this is no longer no longer a cone it is just a set. it is just a set. Now, there is something interesting about it is that suppose minus of xi now there is suppose 0 suppose there is suppose I have the following condition suppose now given xi greater than 0 there exists x bar element of C such that you see f is always a convex function such that 0 belongs to del E f x bar plus n f is a convex function C is a convex set and C is a convex set it is standardized. Then let us see from here what can we get. It would imply that 0 is equal to xi plus v, where this belongs to so this imply f of x bar, f of x minus x bar is greater than equal to xi times x minus x bar minus epsilon, but xi is equal to minus of v. So, this would imply that f of x minus f of x bar is greater than equal to minus of v in a product x minus x bar minus epsilon. But this, this shows that this thing by the fact that v belongs to this, this is greater than equal to epsilon. So, this would immediately imply that f x minus f x bar is greater than equal to minus epsilon, right. So, minus epsilon minus epsilon. So, this would imply that f x minus f x bar is greater than equal to minus 2 epsilon proved implying that x bar is a is an 2 epsilon 
mean of f over c. So, if you have both the same epsilon here, what you get is a 2 epsilon mean, it is not the same epsilon mean. Right. So, you see things what you know about when you handle try to handle epsilon sub differentials and approximate minimum epsilon minima things are slightly different. Now, what happens? if we have x bar to be an epsilon mean of f over c. So, this would imply for all x element of c f of x minus f of x bar is greater than equal to xi times x minus x bar minus epsilon. So, for all x it implies that f x minus f x bar plus epsilon is bigger than equal to 0 for all x in C sorry. So, this is known to be greater than 0. So, if 0 is element of del E. So, so now what I am having is the following. I am having that xi times x minus x bar this one if I put a 0 here if 0 belongs to this you see. So, if you now from there how do I figure out some necessary condition suppose this is true for all x then if I put xi equal to 0 the condition is satisfied, but then if I put xi equal to 0 this condition is not true for all elements of C xi. So, when 0 element of xi we I put 0 this is only true for this fact is only true for all x element of C. So, for all x element of R n this fact might not become true. So, if x is equal to R if C is equal to R n now, now if I choose if C is equal to R n then it would imply that x bar is an epsilon mean if 0 is element of again if 0 is element of del E f x bar it implies that x bar is an epsilon mean. Now, the interesting part is that this uh, fact this fact is not so easy when you make the problem constant this analyzing of epsilon minima that is exactly what I had shown you. So, in the unconstrained case it is much more simpler. So, you can say okay, then what I can do is if f is to be minimized over c and epsilon and x bar is an epsilon mean then is x bar an epsilon mean of f plus del c x answer looks like yes because you see if I take uh, f of x plus del c x plus f of x minus plus f of x bar sorry minus f of x bar 
plus del C x bar. Then observe that when this is 0, when C is in x, this is always greater than minus infinity, minus epsilon. And when C is, when sorry, when x is in C, this is 0. So, f x minus f x bar is anyway bigger than minus epsilon that is given to you. And if C is not in x, then this becomes plus infinity. So, anyway that whole thing is bigger than minus epsilon. So, it implies that this is greater than equal to minus epsilon for all x element of R n. So, a necessary and sufficient condition is 0 belonging to del epsilon of f plus del c x bar. Now, if I want to expand it again this question of some rule will come and here we have a lower semi continuous function and so there will be a lot of two technical after this. So, we will go back to our uh, problem of maximizing or the problem P 1 of maximizing f x over x element of C, which you again this is a convex function and this is a convex set. Let us uh, handle this uh, situation a bit uh, interestingly. I can pose this problem as minimize minus f x such that x is belonging to C. Now, if I put the phi x as a 0 function, uh, then x, if x bar solves this same as p 1, p 1 it means that x bar also solves mean of del c minus f x over x element of R n. And for this the optimality condition is known to us, the optimality condition is del epsilon of f x. Now you can say, oh, why, why have, why are you talking about uh, del C now? Hmm. Now here, the optimality condition that we have given, if you look slightly carefully, can be extended to the case where this can be extended to the case where you have an extended valued lower semi-continuous functions. So if even if f from R n to R is actually lower semi continuous is R into R bar is proper LSC which is the case of this function. You can similarly for every x bar in the domain of f you can define del f sal in x and for any element in the domain of f you will have this. Actually what you need to know is that you can now Basically, if you have x bar in the domain of f, does not matter. So, if, if this this will be not equal to phi. So, it does not matter even if you have a lower semi continuous function. So, even if you have one function continuous, suppose you have f minus g and f is lower semi continuous and g is uh, continuous and f is lower semi continuous, then also you will have the similar relation del f x sub in bracket of del a uh, subset of. So, you will have this, this relation, this relation will hold daily, if you have f minus g daily g subset of daily f in this particular case, this the lower semi continuous function would be on the other side. So, you have just applied what you have learned. So, what you have known, so whatever we have this, this result what we have learned here, 
that if this happens then x bar is a global minimum when f and g are both finite valued function, but if f is a proper lower semi continuous convex function then this is always non empty if x bar is an element of domain. So, for any element x bar in the domain in this case c x bar is in c which is in the domain this result will also hold true if g is a finite valued function and f is lower semi continuous and convex this result will also hold in a very very straightforward fashion. The proof can be very simply modified so I have not mentioned this. So, now I will have this this thing so for all epsilon greater than 0. So, this would imply and it will be your homework to figure out that this is nothing but this set. So, here is a neat looking necessary and sufficient optimality condition for maximization for finding a global maxima of a convex function, but you realize that this is not so easy to prove because not is not easy to sorry it is easy to prove, but it is not so easy to compute and really verify because the problem this sort of conditions run into difficulties because we have for all epsilon greater than equal to 0 can these conditions be improved so that they are much more handleable in actual computation. So, this is a hard non convex problem and this to improve these conditions is a challenge which is still not even answered. So, this you prove as homework, this is very very simple just the definition. With this I would like to end today's talk and this course basically ends here. Thank you for listening to this uh, long 39 uh, session journey. The last talk the 40th one instead of summarizing I will give you a different flavor of uh, what I would say I will give you an entertainment lecture and where I will show you some very fascinating aspect of quadratic optimization and I will show you how semi definite programming would play a role there. Thank you very much.